Hey everybody, this is Bob Kovacs here at Wirefly with the second part of our two-part review on the Samsung Epic 4G Touch. Now before I get started, man, this is uh, kind of crazy because we just got official word today that the actual name of this phone is not the Samsung Epic 4G Touch, it's the Samsung Galaxy S2 Epic 4G Touch. Right, it's that big long thing. Yeah, okay. Samsung Galaxy S2 Epic 4G Touch. A real mouthful. That is the official name of this phone as I speak. It's still ready to be launched on September 16, which I think is this coming Friday. So uh, I got to tell you, I've been working with this phone a lot. Really great phone. Very fast. Uh, lots of stuff that I want to show you about it. So let's get to it because I want to keep this to a reasonably short length. Okay. Now, I know that uh, lots of you are interested in how well the camera works and how well it works for both still images and uh, video. So let's go ahead and start looking at the still images that I took with the uh, Epic 4G Touch. As many of you know, I like to set up a little still life on my desk. So here's a look at that still life. I try to get a mix of colors and so forth. Uh, the focus is very good from the Epic 4G Touch. I am very impressed actually with the focus capability of the camera. Now this is uh, the shot. I took this from about a foot away or so. And then I went in for a close up using the macro setting. Here's that macro shot. That is really, really clear. Notice the dime. Man, that's pretty darn spectacularly clear, I thought. So I thought the focus was very good. Then I like to get some flesh tone shots. I use my uh, cubicle mates. There's Luis on the left and Jen on the right. Now it's tinged kind of blue. I used the flash, the LED flash. And the LED flash certainly made their flesh tones kind of blue tinged. However, again, the focus is among the best focuses I've seen for face shots. Yeah, I thought it did a pretty good job. The background is actually a little softer focus than the faces are and that's a really good thing. Then I went outside to shoot some video. It was a beautiful sunny day. Let's go ahead and take a look at that video now. This is video from the Samsung Epic 4G Touch. That is the Wirefly building right there. It's a beautiful bright sunny day. Strong sunshine today. And I have selected the uh, high visibility setting for the display. And I can easily see the display here on the Epic 4G Touch. Uh, now it's not overly bright, but I am in strong sunshine and I can easily see the display. Very curious to know how the sound from this phone sounds. A beautiful blue sky. You can see that the phone is uh, handling the different levels here, uh, video levels, uh, brightness levels. So this looks pretty good to me. Of course, I'm standing out here in the bright sun. So let's take it inside and see how this video looks. I was impressed with the video. I thought that the picture quality was good. I thought the sound quality was good. Now, the sound came out just a little bit loud with a little bit of distortion. Otherwise, I held the uh, phone at about the same distance I always hold the phone, and my voice sounds warm and clear and loud. Uh, very impressive. Uh, so I think that this will be a good phone. Uh, if you like to shoot videos and narrate them yourself, this will be a very good phone for that. Uh, I'm not so sure how it'll work at a concert, if it's a really loud concert. Uh, I'm a little concerned that you might get some distortion. I did not try it in a concert setting, but again, I was very impressed with how well it, it worked when I was narrating my own video there. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of the camera settings. I think it's this way. There's the camera. There's lots of settings that you can get into. We'll put this here to give me something to point at. And uh, we'll go to the settings thing here. There's lots and lots of modes. Here's shooting modes. So lots of things you can do here. Panorama shots, action shots. Let's go back. Resolution adjustments, of course. Uh, now, when I was outdoors, I mentioned the outdoor visibility. That setting is right here. When you go to on, notice that it makes it a lot brighter. See, it brightened up the screen. I'll go to off on that. And it made the screen dimmer. So when you're shooting outside, which is what I did before, I went to outdoor visibility and it did a pretty good job. It's got blink detection, anti-shake, all very good things. 
There's uh, plenty of effects. One more time. Scene modes. So lots of different things to choose from here. So I thought that the camera in this did a pretty darn good job of being able to uh, capture whatever it is you need to capture. Let's go back one more time to that. Now here's the front camera. The front camera is a 2 megapixel. There I am. Hey, look at that. Hi. It's a 2 megapixel, which is just about the uh, highest resolution front camera that I have seen in a cell phone. So here I'm looking down at the phone, so now you're seeing me. There I am in my tiny little studio. There's a light to my left and a light to my right, and I don't use the light overhead because that makes too much glare. And uh, I guess you can't really see around the room here, but it's just a very small room. There's a door. That uh, white thing you see back there, that's on a door. And uh, just a tiny little closet they turned into something that we call the studio. Yeah, sure. Okay, let's go back to the rear camera. And again, if you have this in automatic, uh, you get beautiful sharp focus. Look at how close I am. I'm, I'm only about uh, that far from the card and it's beautifully in focus, so it does a very nice job. And uh, again, I was pleased with both the video and the still images that I got from the Epic 4G Touch. Now let's go over here. Of course, this is on Sprint, so there's lots of different Sprint features. It's got a Sprint ID feature and so forth. Uh, you know, I've used the Sprint ID features on other phones, and if you like that sort of thing, it's okay. It doesn't really do much for me. There's nice widgets that this has. I like, really like the news widget that they have here. Uh, again, that's part of uh, what Samsung adds to this phone. And uh, coming over here, I wanted to show you YouTube. Excuse me, I'm going to go a little differently into YouTube. I'm going to go uh, via the internet here because I have it all set up. Now, uh, this is a video that I shot. This is uh, the U.S. Army Band Downrange. They're covering a Earth, Wind & Fire song here called September. So let's go ahead and turn this up. So this woman over here on the right, she's the lead singer for this song. She's actually a sergeant major in the army. And she looks pretty good in those fatigue pants too, I should say. Anyway, that's the U.S. Army Band Down Range doing the song September. And I thought the sound that I can hear directly from the phone, as well as the video on the phone, the image quality is excellent. I shot this in HD and uh, I think that you could easily show this to four or five people and they could get a good idea of what's going on on the screen. The screen is that big and that clear. So, uh, as I said, good sound. Now, if you're in a crowded room and it's noisy, you're not going to hear the sound. But if you're in a quiet room, in a kitchen or something, hey, it's going to sound great. So, there we go. That's what the video is like. And uh, finally, I want to show a little bit of gameplay. Here's uh, Angry Birds. I was playing it before. This is a great screen for a game like Angry Birds. The uh, Super AMOLED Plus screens, the colors just absolutely pop on these screens. I'm going to go ahead and we'll start at the beginning here with uh, Angry Birds. So it uh, starts with this little bit of, of a visual tale here. Oh no, their eggs are gone. And you'll see that the mean pigs have stolen the eggs. Now you can see that the colors are a little chunky here. They're not as smooth as perhaps I would have thought the colors could be. That could be the way that the animation was generated on this. I don't really know. But uh, here we go. We're going to blast those nasty pigs. Whoops! I missed them. We'll try that one again. Okay. There we go. Very easy to get through that level. Just uh, go straight at them and you'll take it right away and uh, get a high score. So uh, Angry Birds plays great. This is a terrific phone to waste a lot of time in. A lot of you I know are going to ask me if uh, 
uh, if, what the battery like life is like on this phone. I have used it now for several days. I haven't really attempted to run down the battery all the way. I find that overnight, if I just let it sit on my kitchen table with the screen off, the phone put to sleep, so to speak, I find that it loses about 10 to 15 percent of its battery life. So uh, not super impressive. However, I can use it at my desk for an hour, and I'm only down about, uh, again, 10-15%. To me, that says I can use this phone four or five hours with the screen going, me doing things on them. Now, if I was using 4G and I was um, uh, trying to update a lot of widgets and so forth, then it might tend to consume a lot of power. So like any other phone, you have to watch what you have turned on if you want the battery to last as long as possible. If you turn everything on and tell them, you know, you want your Twitter widget updated every 30 minutes and Facebook updated every 30 minutes and the weather and uh, the news and all of the next thing you know, all of those things are going to be pulling down your power. So now, I really like this. Uh, I mentioned in the part one review, I always have liked a big screen. The Super AMOLED displays are great. The resolution is fantastic because the Super AMOLED Plus screen breaks down each pixel into sub-pixels. That gives it the appearance of looking even clearer. However, it is true that it's 480 by 800, and empirically, that's not as high as uh, 540 by 960. Sorry to throw a big word like empirically out there. Uh, at you, but uh, I, I have been known to use such words from time to time. So I wish, I still wish that Samsung had pumped up the resolution on this to at least 540 by 960, but I got to tell you, it is a beautiful display. Having that slightly lower resolution gives it some really good uh, um, uh, benchmark numbers. Now I did a SmartBench 2011 test in the first video. I told you that I couldn't load SmartBench 2011. I used SmartBench 2010. I went back, was able to load it, and with some difficulty was able to get SmartBench 2011 to run. Let me tell you the numbers I got from that. I'm not going to go ahead and run it. But the numbers I got were excellent. The productivity score for SmartBench 2011 was 4,137. Ding, 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 ding. That's now a new high score for SmartBench in my experience. 4,137. Folks, this is a phone that's right out of the box. I've not tried to hot rod it in any way. I've not done anything to Android. I've not rooted it. I've not tried to uh, improve the speed of the processor. This is the 1.2 gigahertz processor that comes in this phone. So anyway, productivity was 4137. The game score in the SmartBench 2011 was 2227. 2227. Uh, I think those are fantastic scores, especially the productivity score. That shows that this is a phone that really can crank out the numbers if you want to really push numbers with this phone. And again, I'm not sure that SmartBench 2011 actually use, uses both of the cores. I think it may just use only one core. Anyway, that wraps up part two of this review of the Samsung Galaxy S2 Epic 4G Touch for Sprint. Hey, I'm Bob Kovacs here at Wirefly. I hope you enjoyed this review. And thanks for watching.